Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can manage your custom content via multiple drives with the new Content Manager. It allows you to store content in multiple drives and folders and also enables you to utilize network drive capability so you can work more easily with a team as well as reduce your usage of local disk space. We have a sister tutorial to this one that deals specifically with template content so feel free to check that out as well. Okay, let's first look at how we can import our custom content from previous versions. In this case, CTA4. On the left side here we have the CTA4 Content Manager, while on the right is the new CTA5 version. The new version allows you to simply click and drag your content from CTA4 to the Content Manager in CTA5. The cool thing about this is that even if your content are in different formats or the folder structure is different, the Content Manager in CTA5 is smart enough to organize everything correctly and automatically assign the correct content categories. You can see here that when I multi-select these items in the custom character folder and drag them over to CTA5, they will automatically be categorized in the correct actor subfolder structure. You can uncheck show subfolder items to see a different view. There is also a new default custom category in CTA5 for animals, so if any of your actors fall into that classification, then you can simply click and drag their subfolders to the correct parent. If we repeat the process with these custom accessories, they'll also be placed by default into the new accessory folder in CTA5. Again, you can click and drag the content to the relevant subfolders to be better organized. Regardless of the format, everything will automatically be placed in the proper custom folder structure once it's dragged over. Aside from CTA4, we can also import content directly from Windows Explorer via drag and drop. You can see in this window here I have a number of different types of content, from various facial features to hair and random accessories. I can select everything in the window and drag it over to the Content Manager, and when I do, everything gets put in its right place. You can use the same process in Composer mode as well as Stage mode. You can see here in Composer mode that all of the heads, facial features, and more are organized correctly. Please note that the Content Manager structure will change depending on whether you are in Stage mode or Composer mode, according to the functionality of each. It's always good practice to consider cutting and pasting the content to reduce space as opposed to maintaining redundant backup copies of your files. Right-click in any of the folders and select Find File to open up the default location for that type of file. And then simply cut and paste your matching file types there. In this case, we're using project files. The files will work just fine despite the location change. Okay, so what if you want to spread your content out over multiple drives on your machine? You'll notice the drop-down menu on the left of the Content Manager is currently set to default. If we want to define another custom folder structure, we can do so by going into the Content Manager Settings menu. Here you'll see Default in its corresponding hard drive location. If I click on the plus button, I can add a different location here. In this case, it's a folder called Project 1 on the C drive. Once that's set, then I can simply click that new location from the same drop-down menu and drag any content from Explorer like I did earlier. One thing to note here that is different from sharing template content on multiple drives is that you cannot search across multiple drives for custom content. However, you can simply click the button to open the file location, which is next to the drop-down menu. You can browse and search your content that way as well. Okay, lastly, let's look at how to set up a shared network disk for a collaborative workgroup project. Here I already have a folder structure set up that contains multiple different types of content. If I want to make this accessible to everyone else on my workgroup license, then I first need to go to the settings again and create the network disk path, which is basically the same procedure as just adding another local drive. With network drives, you'll be advised to uncheck the Update with File Explorer option to prevent conflicts with multiple machines. However, I'll keep mine checked for now, and when I switch to that custom network drive I just added from the dropdown, it will sync automatically. If you've shut down auto-update, you can also refresh the content manually as well. You can see that everything is now synced up and available, 
And although the actual content is only installed on a single device locally, all the network devices can access it as well, which saves huge amounts of space on a group project. If you right-click on any of the items and select Find File, you'll see that it will also take you to the network drive path we defined earlier. That's about all there is for this tutorial, guys. Please be sure to check out the Reillusion page that details all of the benefits you can take advantage of by using a workgroup license when working on a project with a group. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to check back on our Learning Center for more updated tutorials. I'll see you in the next video.